Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another Cornerstone Quick Tips. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's video, we are going to take a look at how to power our CS charts with a Gravity Forms calculator. I promise that we're gonna try to keep things as simple as possible, so without further ado, let's dive in. To give you a little bit of background on what tools we're using here, I'm gonna jump over to our plugins and show you what we have installed. First things first, you are going to need Cornerstone charts because that is what we are powering today. We are using Gravity Forms to build out our calculator, and I am extending the functionality of Gravity Forms with Gravity Perks. This is just the parent plugin of Gravity Perks, which then allows me to install advanced calculations. And we are using that because we are going to create a 10-year return on interest calculator in Gravity Forms. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to jump into Gravity Forms. We're going to click Add New, and we're going to create a blank form. We'll call this ROI calculator and we'll click create blank form. Once we're here, we're gonna go ahead and add some number fields. And there's a little bit we're gonna be doing under the hood here, so just follow along. We're gonna add our first number field and this one is actually going to be our invested total. So how much are we putting into this account? Now we wanna add another number field here and this is going to be our expected interest rate. All right, so this is the interest rate that we are expecting to get. And then the rest of the calculator, really, if I were building this out for production, could be hidden from the user's view, but we're gonna leave it in view so we can kind of see what's going on here. Now, we are just building out a pretty rudimentary calculator here. I'm sure you could get much more advanced with combining formulas, but we're gonna actually break things down each into their own individual fields. So what that's gonna look like is we're gonna add another number field here, and we're gonna convert our interest rate. So if someone says that they're expecting to get an 8% interest rate, we need to convert that to a decimal. So we're gonna call this our converted interest rate rate now you could make this a hidden field so it's hidden from the user's view but we're going to enable our calculation here and all we are going to do is calculate our expected interest rate divided by 100. now what we need to do in order to see those fields in here is make sure that we save the form and refresh the page once we've done that let's jump back into our converted interest rate and say we want our expected interest rate divided by 100 so that's going to give us our decimal interest rate there now let's go ahead and add another number field here and now we want to perform a little bit more complex math and this is where we needed that advanced calculations tool so again we're going to go ahead and save our form and refresh the page so that our new converted interest rate field shows up and because this roi calculator is a 10-year roi we're going to create a fixed field for each of those years so this will be year one we're going to enable our advanced calculations here and we're going to say we want to take the invested total and multiply that by one plus our converted interest rate, so that's the decimal, and then two, and this is year one, so to the first power here. Now what we can do is duplicate that, and this will be year two, and I'm gonna speed through these, but you'd basically just add a two here, do year three, and add a three, and so on and so forth. But we'll speed through this so you don't have to watch me do this repetitively here. So now with all of that done, we are going to go ahead and save, and now we can begin building out the query parameter portion of our calculator. So let's jump into settings and go into our confirmations. Now what we wanna do here is jump into our default confirmation, and we wanna add a page. You could do a redirect as well, but we are going to just redirect this to an existing page, and we're gonna say, take us to the home page. Now, the home page is actually where we're also going to build the calculator, so it's really redirecting to itself. And then under our query parameters here, we get to add in our keys, which is the first part, and then our values, which are going to be from the form. And so we can arbitrarily pick whatever we want these keys to be. For the sake of ease, I'm just going to label these Y1 for year one equals, and then we'll grab year one, whatever that value is, and put it in here. Then we'll go ahead and add an ampersand, and we'll do year two equals and so on and so forth. And then we'll add in year 10. So you make sure you have your key, your equal sign, your value, and if you're adding multiples in here like I am, you also wanna make sure they're always separated by an ampersand here. We'll go ahead and save our confirmation, and now we get into the fun part, which is building out the front end of our calculator. So let's jump into Cornerstone, and we are going to just start from scratch. Now, we're not gonna get into a whole lot of design here. We're looking specifically at the functionality. So let's go ahead and just add a column and we'll add in our form. So let's type in form integration and pop that over here. 
and we'll connect our gravity form and specifically our ROI calculator. And there it is showing up. Now, like I said, if I were really doing this on the front end, I would be hiding these calculated values here because we're only using those to power our charts uh, once the form is submitted. But I'm going to leave those visible so you can kind of see what is happening and what is taking place behind the scenes here. The next thing we want to do is add another section. And in this section, we are going to add a chart. Let's do a line chart and pop that right in here. And you'll notice right off the bat, there are label sets and you can actually create loopers and consumers on the label sets here. And then there's also data sets and you can do the same thing there. Our label sets are going to be a fixed value. So let's just say label one is year one. And you'll see those start to populate down here on the X axis. And we'll do the same thing nine more times. Now that we have all of those in there, you can see them all across the X axis here. We have year one through year 10. So now we want to add in our data values and we know we're going to have 10 of those as well. So we're going to jump back to our data set here and we'll start with the first one. And what we're going to do is actually go into our dynamic data here and pull up our URL query string parameter. And we want to say get key Y one and we'll click the plus sign. And now that's going to grab whatever value is in Y one. And we'll pick some arbitrary color here to design this out. And we'll just pop that into both our background color and our border color fields. And we'll go ahead and duplicate this out 10 times and do the same thing, just changing out our query parameter key value for each of these. And there we have it. So as you can see, it isn't populating any data now, but once we submit that form and the query parameters are passed through, it should begin building things out here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this on the front end. Now there is one more step we're gonna take after we make sure this is all functioning. So our invested total, let's say this is $10,000 and our expected interest rate is 8%. You'll notice we converted that to a decimal and then we're performing our math off of that here and each of our years has a calculation but our chart is not populated yet. And so if I was really doing this, I'd probably set some conditional logic that shows the form first, and then when submitted, hides the form and shows the chart. And so we'll click submit. And you'll notice up at the top here, it now passed through all of our values, but you'll notice that because Gravity Forms always passes this through with a comma, that's getting in the way of some of our numbers here. And there's a really easy fix. Gravity Forms actually has a built-in filter that we can simply pop into our child theme. So this is probably the most advanced part of what we're looking at here. Let's jump back into the back end of WordPress, go into appearance theme file editor, make sure that we are in our child theme here and jump into our functions.php and paste in that very simple Gravity Forms filter that simply removes the thousand separator and we'll click update. Now, when we jump back up to the front end here, let's go ahead and do this one more time. We are gonna type in 10,000 at an 8% interest rate, see all of our numeric values converted here and click submit. That now fixed all of our numbers in the URL here, which looks great. Let's scroll down to our chart and there we have our chart populating and it's even passing through each of those numbers into our data set values here so I can see those numbers over time. And just like that, we've created a very simple return on interest calculator using Gravity Forms, advanced calculations by Gravity Wiz, and CS charts. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful and happy building.